Hi everyone, it's Sasha from Long Play Vinyl and in today's video we will be balancing the tone arm on a turntable, we'll be setting the stylus tracking pressure and we will be setting the anti-skating on a turntable. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we're about to show you how all of this is done. It's not as complicated as it sounds but you have to pay attention to how we're doing it. Today we'll be working with my personal turntable, it's an SL1200 Mark V. Uh, you might have a different turntable but the setup should be very very similar so don't worry if you don't have the same exactly turntable, it should be once again as I mentioned very similar. So first of all we looked into how to balance a tone arm, in other words finding the balance point where the tone arm floats perfectly horizontal without user intervention. First of all, you need to stand in front of the turntable and focus on the tone arm assembly area. The second step, you're going to locate the anti-skating and set it to zero. It will ensure that the tone arm won't move outwards while you find the balance point of your actual tone arm. Number three, remove the stylus cover if present and take extra precautions not to damage the stylus during the process, either by touching it with your fingers or dropping the tone arm on the platter. Next, unclip the tone arm if you have the clip holding it uh, from the armrest and leave the Q lever down. Hold the head shell with your right hand and place the tone arm as if you were to play a record. Keep holding the tone arm by the head shell. Do not let the stylus touch any surface at all or you risk damaging your stylus. And these little guys are very expensive these days. While holding the head shell, use your left hand to turn the back of the counterweight. Clockwise turn will apply less tracking force and a counterclockwise turn will apply more tracking force. The idea here is to apply enough force so that the torn arm floats or is balanced perfectly horizontal without user intervention. If the counterweight is too far back, the torn arm will tilt backwards. Rotate the counterweight counterclockwise to apply more tracking force. If the counterweight is too far in front, the tone arm will tilt towards the head shell. Rotate the counterweight clockwise to apply less tracking force. The counterweight is balanced when the tone arm flows perfectly horizontal without once again user intervention. Finding the right balance point can be frustrating. Proceed with patience and caution. The stylus, the tone arm and its assembly are very fragile. That's it for the tone arm balance. Return the tone arm to its rest and clip it in safely. Next we will set the stylus tracking force applied to the vinyl during playback. Before going further, refer to your specific cartridge stylus instructions for the recommended weight and as you will need the value to accurately set the stylus tracking pressure. Every cartridge stylus model is different. Hence, the weight needed will be different. Refer to the manufacturer's instructions for the accurate weight range suitable for your cartridge stylus. Most manufacturers will provide this information on their official websites if you don't know it off the bat. Notice the values for the stylus tracking force control. Make sure the torn arm is clipped to its rest. Use one hand to hold the back of the counterweight steady. For this step, it should not move from its balanced position. Hold the back of the counterweight steady. Move the stylus tracking force control to zero. Remember, only the front part of the counterweight should rotate. Now the tone arm is balanced and has zero tracking force. To apply tracking force, hold the counterweight from the back and turn it counterclockwise to the desired value. The stylus tracking force control will indicate the weight applied to the vinyl record during playback. Remember, setting the tracking force too high will wear out your vinyl record faster. If the cartridge stylus manufacturer recommends a tracking force range from 2 grams to 5 grams, try setting it around 3 or 3.5 three grams and do a listening test. The tone arm is now perfectly balanced and the stylus tracking force has been correctly set. When playing vinyl, the tone arm moves from the outside of the disc to the inside. Due to the law of physics, a rotation of the disc, the tip is actually being drawn more into the inwards, inside of your disc. To counter this offset, anti-skating applies 
a slight frictional force to the tone arm and keeps the cartridge and stylus aligned to the groove. Usually for normal vinyl playback, you would adjust your anti-skating to the same level that you adjusted your stylus pressure. However, if you're DJing, you might have to alter those things a little bit because your stylus might skip or jump if you uh, aren't adjusting it differently. But if you're just listening to vinyl at home, that's not something you should be even worrying about. You might have an issue with balancing your tone arm and it's really rare that people have those but you might run into that and the actual reason for, uh, for this issue is that uneven weight distribution for your tone arm and that usually happens if your uh, cartridge stylus and head shell set are a little bit too light. So in my case I'm, ha I'm using a DJ Grotto uh, stylus and my counterweight is adjusted to almost its maximum it's over 3 it's 3.2 and uh, you know you might have you might have to go higher than that and your head shell and everything in it might just not be heavy enough in this case um, some head shells will come with like a little weight plate like I have right here in my hands so this kind of weight uh, comes originally with the Technics turntable for the stock a head shell and you'll put it inside the head shell for a little bit more weight and if that is not enough you might need to use one of these things this is actually extra weight that you'll put in the back of your tone arm balance right here so this is pretty much the only issue that you might have with balancing your tone arm as I mentioned previously uneven weight distribution of some sort and usually it's caused by the actual head shell um, and everything that's in it. To test even further, you could use a stylus tracking force scale like I'm using right here to see the actual weight that it shows you. Most of the scales are pretty accurate and they're inexpensive that could be purchased for under $20. Now the number on the scale should be the same one that you set on the counterweight or really, really close to it. If there's a difference in that number, then there is an issue with your tone arm. And usually on inexpensive turntables, it could be just a problem with the production that you see the numbers, but they aren't real. <laughs> um, the numbers are a little bit off and this is why the scale will tell you a different reading. Now, if you do that, also make sure that you are using a scale that's actually accurate to not mess up your reading and to not force you to try to reset everything for days and days on. So that would be another suggestion, just if you wanna make sure, and just if you have another 10 to $20 uh, to spare on a scale like this one. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any comments or any questions, don't hesitate and post them in the comments below. If you like the content coming from this channel, please do subscribe to this video and we will make sure to push out more videos just for you. Thanks once again for watching.